Tile Coach. I'm Isaac Ostrom. I'm a licensed tile contractor in Northern California. And today I'm going to be showing how to put this curdy membrane up on a mortar bed that we did yesterday. So uh, we floated these walls yesterday. If you want to see that video of the, all the steps that we got up to this point, I'm going to put some links up here and you can watch those videos after you watch this video. But basically we got all of our heated floor in. We floated everything. We're putting the curdy membrane up and what you can see is, is um, we're, we're just using the three foot rolls of curdy, and what, what we do when we come to the edges is we try to squeeze out as much of the mortar as possible on the edges, on the two inch edges. When we overlap it, it's going to minimize the buildup. So you can see here with our eight foot edge, uh, we have very little buildup. Zach, maybe you can come in here and get um, some footage of, I mean, we have barely any dips in this and the, that's a result of us squeezing all of the thin set out that we can where there is any overlap. But we got a really nice straight flat wall and really the only way I've found that you can get your walls to look like this is if you float them. And I know you can wet shim, uh, but even at that, I've done a lot of wet shim jobs and they never turn out as nice as a floated mortar bed. So this is an instance where we kind of combined old school methods with new technology. So it doesn't have to be an either or thing. A lot of people get caught up in their methods and they think, oh, well, floating, you got to float, that's better. Or no, curdy is what you got to do or foam. You know, if, if it works and I know it's going to last, um, I'll go ahead and use those components because uh, mortar bed is a great way to do things and surface waterproofing is a great way to do things, especially if you want to do a heated floor like we're doing in here or curbless entry with line drains. So much better to do with a curdy or a hydroband type system. So what you want to do on any substrate, whether this was a cement board, whether it was drywall or a mortar bed, you want to go ahead and get, get the substrate wet. Get, get it so it drinks up some of the water. And this mortar bed, being that we set it, uh, we floated it yesterday, it still doesn't have all the water evaporated out of it. So it's a, it's a nice surface to put curdy on. But by hitting it with a sponge, it's, it's going to allow the thin set uh, to have a little longer open time so that we can spread our thin set and then get our sheet of membrane up there. So we're going to try to do this, this whole thing in one sheet wrapping up and over. And you can see with our, um, when we did this mortar bed, we channeled out right here um, to put the Dietrich heat membrane in there. So that's a clever way to get your wire up and over a bench with uh, you can see that, how it didn't have build out. It's a great way to do that. That's some of the stuff you can do when you're floating. You can really make any surface the way you want it. What I have here is a uh, 3 16 V-notch trowel. It's my trowel of choice for using Curdy. And I know Curdy has uh, their own trowel. It's more like an eighth inch square notch. I find that these put just about the right amount of, of mud on there. Okay, so I got my, my float nice and hydrated. I'm just getting the mud up on the wall. Try not to make a mess because I'm wearing my nice clothes today. Sometimes I don't plan on working and um, it looks like too much fun and I have to get into it. Yeah, I just kind of get the, the mud up on the wall and then I'll use, I'll use the flat side of my trowel to put it where I want it. This really helps avoid uh, plops everywhere. If you're trying to use um, the notch side of your trowel when you're spreading the mud around like this on a wall it has a tendency to fling around and plop off especially if you're using uh, Laticrete Multimax Light which 
for the life of me, I cannot keep anywhere except all over my clothes and on the floor. But um, I've heard other people use it and have good results, but to me, maybe it's because it doesn't have silica in it, but for me, it's really hard to get where I want it. You can see when I'm working with this side of my trowel, I'm not getting it anywhere. Uh, this is Mape Ultra Flex 2, right? Mape Ultra Flex 2. And I'm really happy with it. it see, we got a pretty loose consistency, um, but it's not, not real goopy and messy. It it'll stay where we want it. And that's a pet peeve of mine, is having the thin set just feel right on my trowel. You know, everybody's worried about strength and whatnot. Um, when I'm using thin set, I want to have the right feel on the trowel, the right creaminess or whatever. And this thin set really has it. So after I get it where I want it, now I can go, go back with my V-notch and get the right amount of thin set on there. Again, you don't want, you don't want too much that it's going to cause you unevenness in your walls because that'll mess up our beautiful flow. It's all plumb and level and flat and square. But you need enough to get a good adhesion, good tack. And this is just about right. Just put that there for now. Thin sets, you got to be careful. One thing, you, you'll see us use a lot of Ardex X5 in our, our videos. Uh, I haven't had great success using Ardex X5 um, underneath membranes like Curdy and Ditra. I don't know why, but um, you could peel it back and it'll look like you're getting really good coverage. You come back the next day and it wants to peel off really easy. I think there's something with the way Ardex X5 dries. It just, it's just different. It doesn't grab like this Ultraflex. Um, I mean, it's just hard as a rock when, it, when we came back today. So I don't like to use Ardex X5 with Curdy products anymore. Um, just don't. It's a good thin set, but I think it shrinks. Right? There's something with X5 that it shrinks when it's built up too thick. So, not sure. So we'll get this. When you're going over Dietra or Dietra heat, uh, you gotta make sure you really getting all the air pockets out of the, the membrane. So you don't want to give little air, air bubbles in there. So we're just trying to work fast here. You want to start from the bottom, Steve? Yeah. Okay. Okay. We're good. We're bottomed out right there. We're good there. We got some wiggle room. Go. 
Okay, again, uh, the first thing I do is squeeze out as much of uh, the edge on the two inch overlap that I can. That's where I'm starting. Hopefully we can get a nice, nice firm corner in here. I'm being real careful with this trowel not to dig in too much. Uh, can you hand me the flat trowel, Steve? Right there. So again, it's really hard to get all of the air bubbles out when you're, when you're going around turns. I got an air bubble like right there that doesn't want to come out. So we're going to try this, but we might need to just cut it to make it work. So you can use two sides of the trowel. I'm using the, the back side of my trowel and that's a little bit lighter pressure. When I get to the edges, I'm going to turn to the leading edge of my trowel and what that does is squeeze out any of the extra mud to avoid buildup when you go to seam over it. That gets all of the extra mud out on the edge. Yeah, that's a good technique to use the back edge of your trowel for the, the, the main field of, of the curdy. And then as you get to the edge, use the leading edge and just kind of work that out. So it works all of the extra mud out there. Okay, so we're going to see if I can get this flat. And sometimes you have to use two trowels. Like you might need to hold a trowel right there to comb everything out this way because otherwise it's going to want to keep pulling it out of the corner. That seems to be working really well. And then I can again work the rest of my thin set back into corner there. And this is pre-sloped here too. Um, we put a nice slope on this bench before we put the membrane on. That's something you got to be aware of too is if, um, see we got a good slope on there. Um, you want to put your slope underneath your membrane. You don't want to have this, this waterproofing level and then level out with thin set because you're going to create a dam and you definitely don't want, want water sitting in here. Okay, so let's see. Feel that. Yeah, your tendency is going to be to get air bubbles 
right on this leading edge. Uh, but I think we did a pretty good job here. It looks pretty, pretty dang good. It's a little, little bulbous at the top. It's all right. Looks good. Yeah, it would have been better to um, cut that. Air gets, yeah, air gets trapped in there. Um, yeah, let's cut it and we'll seam it. Okay, so, so I was trying to make this all work in one wrap and it's just not, no matter what air is getting trapped in there, um, you can, you know, there would be no way to get the air out between a gap like that. So I'm just gonna cut this and we're gonna, we're gonna band it. So that's gonna allow that air See, I could, there's no way I could have gotten that to squeeze out um, if it was sealed in there. So now I'm gonna be able to get a good, good strong junction here. And we'll just use, we'll use a piece of curdy band there. I'm gonna do the same thing on the front. I gotta watch out for the wire. Yeah. That'll probably help out enough. Yeah, so you can see, see all of the, everything that, it just kind of gets trapped under there and there's nowhere for it to go. So again, I hear, I have a lot of people that tell me that they, they wrap everything up walls, but I, I have not had good, good luck with that. Just measure those and cut them for me. We're going to put a band on that corner, anyways, right? For sure. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's going to make a lot nicer corner right there. Um, that's going to stay square. The thing with the curdy band is you can fold it and make it a 90 degree so it gives you a nice hard corner. Uh, when you try to round them, it just fills up with air and you end up with this bubble almost every time. I mean, I've tried it so many times that I just, I just cut them now. I don't try to, try to fight it anymore. Not saying it can't be done. Just the way I do it. Yeah, I felt an air bubble in here, so got to get that guy out. You'll see, see that air bubble that I kind of missed. So it's easy. You want to, you got to catch those while you're working. Uh, while you're, while you're putting the thin set on and you're using your trowels to put the curdy down, you really got to pay attention to um, what's going on. Because if you miss those, you're gonna end up fighting those while you're setting. See how much thin set I just got out of there? Got a little pebble in there. But yeah, I just kind of look over everything and you can almost see them. You can almost see the bubbles. I say you can almost see them, you can see them. You just gotta, gotta look kind of hard. my two inch overlap.
I can check my coverage real quick. See, I probably need to hit it a little bit harder there. You can still see the ridges. So if you're just going like this over it, you're probably not putting enough pressure. If I do that, now I'm probably putting enough pressure. There we go. See, took those ridges out of there. So yeah, you gotta put some pressure on it, man. Don't be afraid to use the, the trowel and kind of go after it. You really gotta put pressure on it. See, if you don't, if you don't cut your inside and outside corners, there's nowhere for that thin set and the air behind it to go. That's why you end up with the bubbles. So I'm really pushing everything up and out. So we're gonna need one more right there. We got one more on that side. Okay. All right, so we got a, a fresh batch for the floor. I'm actually using some LHT mortar for this just because uh, the thickness in between the, the lugs on the heated floor, I don't want it to shrink out. Oh yeah, this stuff feels good. Yeah, so with the, the Ditra and the Ditra heat, you really need to work it in to get rid of all those little air bubbles. Uh, Ardex Flex Bone that we use sometimes is actually really nice. It, has a nice way of avoiding a lot of those. So again, this LHT mortar is standing up real nice for us. I'm being 
careful to keep my trowel at a nice high 45 degree angle because I don't want to take too much, too much off of it. Grout float might work too. Just to if you feel like that's wanting to dig in or anything. I want to step on that hell bad. I need a. Yeah, that's what I need is a. Look at that. That's beautiful. That's what I wanted to see. 